There we go. So, hi, Pritish. Uh, my name is Tati uh, Mukono, and I am from Modern Marketing. So, just a little background on Modern Marketing. We are basically, we cover news on branding. Uh, products and technology. We cover also different campaigns across the marketing brand and branding industries. So basically, it's it's like an uh, evolved mix of strategic and traditional marketing with a lot that's on the internet and new media. So this new segment that we are doing with you, uh, we've added to keep our readers um, in uh, in the in the know during the, this lockdown in the marketing and branding together with the advertising industry so that we keep giving them content that's good, that's gonna keep them inform, informed while they are at home. So uh, would you like to introduce yourself and your new role at the Lurie's? Yes, so hi, my name is Preeti Siraj and uh, I'm the new CEO at Lurie's. All righty. So, how long have you been in the, should I say, branding or advertising industry or both? Yeah, well, it's, it's a hybrid. It's been a, been a <laughs> mix of both. So, um, I've been in the industry for just over 17 years. Um, mm. So, started off at a company called Procter & Gamble. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm approaching 20 soon. I'm, I'm counting down to 20, full two wow. decades in the industry. Oh, wow. So, um, could you then like describe in short why you got into the industry and what are your main career, po uh, career positions, which positions you've moved to? Just take us through your journey of being in the industry and basically the highlights there. Yeah, so, so I think one of the key things is that um, I think I was lucky to get into the industry. Um, you know, uh, I, I went through university at a, at a time where uh, opportunities to get into marketing and branding and advertising for people of color was very limited and there was not great awareness of it. Um, and I was, I was lucky to have been exposed to my university newspaper. And that's where the love of branding and advertising actually came up. I was the advertising uh, manager for, for the newspaper. And, and that developed the love to be able to go. So I didn't start off by studying it. I started off really by discovering this love and figuring out every way that I can do to get into it. Oh, awesome. So um, how then did you then progress through your phases until you ended up at the CEO of the Lurie? So just take us through that journey. Yeah, so I, I started off my career in the marketing department of a company called Procter & Gamble. Uh, for anyone who knows P&G, they are the makers of uh, well-known brands such as Pampers and Head and & Shoulders and Pantene and, and yeah. Lacoste and Hugo Boss. And so I, I got in through classical marketing, but I've always had this love for advertising. Um, and I've tried everything to get through it. And I think through that logical process, I moved over to a company called Record Benkiza. And it was there that I discovered um, a brand called Product of the Year. So it's a global agency uh, that helps uh, brands basically advertise and work better. I started that and brought that to South Africa. And through that organization, I opened various companies um, where we did television ads um, for, for companies such as Unilever and Plascon, um, Danone, a range of different companies. And um, spent quite a few years there before getting a call that, that asked if I wanted to discuss coming through to the Luris. And uh, that's, that's basically the journey of getting me here. Oh, wow. Oh, that's quite a journey. <laughs> so what have you enjoyed most about working in this industry? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things I think um, we don't look at a lot is how amazing the people are. We have the most diverse group of people possible um, across any industry, I believe, because, mm. you know, you, you've, got, you've got people who may be analytical, people who are artistic, um, people who have different ideas in terms of how to to move communication forward. And, and that's what I enjoy. I enjoy the diverse discussions, sometimes the diverse arguments that, that come across <laughs> from the people. And it, it all boils down to the amazing talent and the amazing people who make up the industry. Oh, wow. All righty. So um, what would you say, were, what important industry-related changes as you have been in the industry have you noticed over the period of time that you have been a part of it? Yeah, I've, I think one of the important things I've noticed is the resilience of the agency to bounce back, of the industry, sorry, to bounce back from major challenges. 
Uh, I remember roughly around the 2008 period when there was this global crisis. Again, budgets were cut, um, global economies were in turmoil, and, and there was all these talks of job cuts and, and shrinking agencies and shrinking environments and, sh and a shrinking brand community. Yeah. Instead, we were resilient and we bounced back. And I think that was, a, that was a, something that important that I noticed. And then now, the COVID-19 outbreak, this pandemic is going to live on for a long time. But based on my past experiences, mm -hmm. I see the same discussions of people saying shrinking industry, falling down, getting smaller. And I think we're resilient. And I've seen it in the past. And I think it'll happen again. We will bounce back stronger than ever. All righty. Thank you for that. So um, a little thing on you. Now we're focusing on you as an individual. What, sure. Do you have any hobbies or interests? What can you tell us something interesting about British? Not as <laughs> the CEO of the Louise and being in the branding and marketing industry and moving on to advertising. What is it that you like? What are your hobbies? What interests you? So, so, so I, I studied archaeology and I'm obsessed with archaeology. So, so if I get an opportunity to interact with archaeological relics and mm -hmm. you probably can't see, but just behind me, I've got some real Incan relics and I've got a Roman ring that's 1,900 years old. So that's my hobbies. It's, it's still focusing on archaeology, understanding that. Um, and and I, I like the history of, of us and where we've come from. And I focus a lot on that. And archaeology is my, my hobby still up till today. Oh, wow. That is very interesting. Thank you for yeah. that. Dish. So um, what do you think is the key to being successful in the advertising or branding industry? What, what do you think is the key to success? Uh, I think it really comes down to understanding the consumer, being consumer centric mm -hmm. and, and then being willing to challenge boundaries. The, our, our industry is about creativity. It's that, yeah. That's it. It's about creativity, but it's got to be creativity rooted in human truths. And, and if you can find ways to take nuggets of human truth and nuggets of the human experience and then find a creative outlay, a creative layer uh, on it and find a creative way to communicate this to a wide range of people, that will stand you in good stead for success in this industry. Oh, all righty. Thank you for that. Wow, that's, yeah, because I, I know that there's a lot of individuals that are creative. It's mainly about creatives and them trying to use data and creative and actually putting those things together. So that's quite interesting. So what would you say um, has been one of your one or more, whichever ones you can list, uh, favorite campaigns? when whether you were with the current company or the one before that that was that were executed so what was your favorite campaign and why was it a favorite campaign and yeah, it, what my, makes it unique if there is a sense of that in it yeah i think i've worked in a number of really fascinating campaigns throughout my my time in the industry but my my favorite was uh a Dettol campaign uh, mm -hmm. which is weird so relevant to the time that we are in right now. So yeah. uh, um, more than a decade ago, Dettol worked on a 360 degree campaign to find multiple touch points to interact with consumers and, and push this message of hygiene. Because even at that point, there were discussions of a pandemic and when it was actually coming. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and Dettol saw this as a need to educate consumers to uh, to actually help reduce the impact of, of this upcoming pandemic. So mm. we worked in a campaign that involved uh, everything from your usual television ads, print campaigns, but we also had unique stuff, uh, like really unique uh, custom-made trolleys that were branded and put into stores. Um, we were one of the first campaigns to try and put uh, sanitizer and wipes out of stores, which are pretty normal these days. But that's <laughs> I we, know. Um, and then uh, we, we, you know, we did some crazy things like we brought global experts down to, to speak to the community and see this information. And that, that campaign ended up winning a Roger Garlic Award. Um, nice. Chef, the Roger Garlic Award is still, is still in operation, but it was a Roger Garlic Award, which was quite a big deal at the time. And we got... Yeah great feedback and great traction but more importantly the the amount of hygiene messages we're able to seed 
through South African society uh, mm -hmm. had a direct impact when we did surveys later, which showed that consumers actually took this to heart and started practicing these, these initiatives. Oh, and what year was this? Do you remember? This was no, 2005, oh. stand to correction, year 2005, 15 years ago. Yeah, that's Look at us now. <laughs> Look at us now. We're chasing after sanitizers <laughs> and wipes. All right, thank you. So uh, the next question that I would like to relate to you is basically, um, what are the keys? What do you think or what would you say are key to executing a successful campaign? Like you already mentioned, the 360 campaign yeah. and how you did the TED battle. So what would you, yeah. if you were to actually break it down to somebody that really wants to create a nice and all-rounded campaign. What would you think would be the keys to actually creating one successful campaign like the detour one? So take us through. Yeah, I, yeah I, would, I would give anyone the, the same advice, which is one, that you need to find something that's rooted in a human trip. Mm -hmm. uh, because only, only if it's something that somebody can recognize as being a true example of the human experience mm -hmm. will that resonate with them. And then once you've identified that, and, and like with the Dettol campaign, it was about yeah. promoting hygiene. It was a human truth that hygiene is a challenge and we're, we're traversing through a world with lots of challenges, little nuggets of challenges uh, through our hygiene experience, whether it's holding the escalator railing or whether it's like washing your hands as you get out of the loop. Uh, and taking that human truth and finding a way to either make it mind opening or heart opening. And what that means is either mind opening means that you can either get them to apply a logical framework to it, yeah. where from a logical point of view, they understand this and go, yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Or heart opening, where from an emotional standpoint, oh, yeah. they look at it and go, yeah, this resonates with me and it resonates with my family and my community. And I understand now why I need to adopt this. And if you can take a human truth and, and take it on a journey of either being heart opening or mind opening, then you're on, on your way to a very successful campaign. Oh, thank you. So what major industry trends have you actually been mindful of, especially in 2020? What have you seen a different or a lot of companies doing that is like a trend, is like a trendy thing in the industry? Yeah, I think, you know, we're having a look at it right now. One of the, the overarching trends we're seeing is a lack of understanding of, of our future trajectory and being able and making decisions based on the most conservative route possible. So that's the key trend. If you asked me this question three months ago, I'd have given you a totally different answer. But today, that's what we're tracking. Mm. So there's a conservative approach uh, across all the industries, across all organizations right now in the industry, as well as other organizations. And we're tracking that trend. What, what we do believe that we are going to see from a communications perspective is that that while we're very conservative at this point because the channels of reaching consumers are closed off right now and the, and the ability to convert consumers are closed off, mm. what we will experience is that these same organizations are going to be put in a position where they're going to have access to inventory um, at a really favorable rate. They're, they're, in, a, in a few months, you're going to find the holders of this inventory are going to release this at a really favorable rate these organizations are then going to snap up that inventory and then realize that they need to fill it. And as soon as they need to fill it, then we're going to see a spike in creativity again. But the creativity that's going to come is going to very much be focused on the human experience once again. So it's going to be very much focused on how we're supporting you and how we're helping you throughout this difficult time because it is going to be a difficult time to come for, for quite a while. Um, and that's going to have a little bit of a resurgence in terms of brand communication. All right. So uh, we are almost towards the end of our interview. Um, just last words, maybe your views regarding the whole COVID-19 um, lockdown in SA. What are your personal views? And if you could add from the Louis perspective, you can. Yeah. Just your views on that. Yeah, so, so, so the Louis, um you know, we're, we're, we're sending our, our thoughts and prayers to everyone affected by it. And, and we know that we're part of this ecosystem. Um, so we know a lot of people who've been impacted by this, whether it's directly through um, COVID-19 as, as, as an illness or through, 
through businesses, or organizations struggling through this process. So we stand in solidarity with the entire industry and with the entire South Africa and with the entire Africa Middle East region, which we serve as the Luris as well. And, and one of the things I think we want to notice and highlight is, is that we're pushing a campaign that's hashtag beyond COVID. And, and, the reason, and the logic behind this as the Luris is what do we see is that when, you, when times are dark as they are right now, we're going to focus on, on the negativity of it. But if you start focusing on the positivity and what we can achieve, we will surprise ourselves. And, and as the creative industry, we need to lead that change. So as the Luris who are, are guardians of a certain amount of information within the creative industry across Africa and the Middle East, what we're doing is leading new thinking across Africa and the Middle East in terms of how do we go beyond COVID? How do we succeed? And how do we reinvigorate communities, individuals, and, and in entire economies as well post this? And we know it will happen. It will happen and we will have a strong, vibrant society once again. It, we're not sure a time frame, and no one can predict that, yeah. but it will come and we want to support you through that process. All right, that is all that I have for you today. And thank you so much for making the time to talk to us as Modern Marketing. And yeah, we wish you an awesome journey further with, because you started at <laughs> the peak. I started at <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. So yeah, we wish you all the best with your journey. And thank, thank you, you so much for offering us your time. Thanks. And also uh, wishing the entire team at Modern Marketing everything of the best. Um, um, you know, it's thank you for having me on and really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. And goodbye. Stay safe. Thanks. You too. Hey, thanks so much.